Okay, everybody. Uh, here's where me and Marcel are going to go off on our atypical, just whatever tickled our fancy in recent weeks show. But given the way some of y'all have reacted, we have just... Uh, we've decided a good name for the show is the Unsub Show because we're gonna say some things and some people will get mad and they'll click Unsub. Well, obviously, 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 our political shows. I, I mean, I don't know because you're you're in charge of your channel. I mean, do we do the political shows matter? Do we do we garner a, a good response? Or I mean, I, I, I don't care if it's negative or positive response. But I'm asking, <laughs> does, it, does it garner a lot of response? Uh, depending on the topic, it's generating more discussion. It is generating more views, uh, but it is generating some people who adamantly disagree with our opinions on some of these topics to get a little annoyed. And uh, some of them are unsubscribing. Uh, well, you but don't get sad because. It, well, but, but also, you know? it, also, some new people are coming in. You know, it, it's it's a, it's an up and down. It, it, I would say. I would say. My personality, I am not known to, let's say you do something well. You're, okay, in the context of what we do, you're a, uh, a, a geek blogger, and you do well. You, 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 you provide great information. Uh, keep me interested in all that. But you turn out to be like this flaming-ass communist that I can't stand. It doesn't mean I am sub from you. I think that the content you provide as a geek is awesome, but I don't think the content you provide as a political person is worth a damn. That doesn't mean I unsub from you from the, my original thing of what I sub I subscribed to you in the first place. I think that's a, a kind of a, hypocr a hypocritical action, if you will. We um, we've lost some. We have. It, 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 uh, however, I think I think the core audience isn't mad at us and like you said that some some of them are like you say it's like they don't they they won't watch this stuff but they'll watch piece they'll watch the tech babble and the other stuff but formerly pcv mac uh i world formerly i world cranky geeks but uh, it's well, hey, hey guess what I, I need to uh give me like one minute okay. if you want to like make a, a dissertation or something i'll be back in one minute Okay, starting uh, I'm going to say this again, um, since we're starting here. Uh, for those of you who are wondering, it's, uh, it, there's a joke in that title. It's the unsub show, because some people get very annoyed that we uh, state honest opinions on things that are sometimes controversial. So this is, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, it's... I can sit up here and try and please everybody, or I can say my honest opinion. And if you don't like it, you can either tell me to shut the F up and say, I'm done something if you don't shut up! Or you can explain to me why you think I'm wrong. You know, it's, I actually encourage open debate. I, I, I like the fact that some of those conversations are encouraging conversation. You know, I, I, on Google+, Plus, I have been getting an adamant debates with people who politically are completely 180 with me. Uh, and some of them get annoyed, and some of them, right. you know, they go, well, I disagree with you, but at least the topic is being discussed. You know, at least it's being analyzed as such, and, you know, it's civil discussion, there's nothing wrong with it, at all. Now, it's hardly civil discussion with you and me here, because we largely agree on a lot of this stuff, but... <laughs> yeah, well, I disagree. <laughs> Yeah. We hardly disagree, but uh, uh, yeah, it's true. You know, if you can have a great conversation with someone who even believes opposite of you, I think it, it's kudos to you who likes to discuss your point of view, even if you have to agree to disagree. It's, it's, it's the discussion that's the point anyway. That's the interest that we had. And, um, the more civil we can act about it, maybe perhaps we learn from each other in the process, or we don't. But I think it's. We have to give kudos and, and, and a great deal of credit to those that stick it through. We say, well, you know what? You're still my friend at the end of the day. We can get a beer, even though we disagree with these points. And this and that. Well, and a lot of the stuff we've been getting to, and some of this, especially like the some of the videos I did recently, uh, some of the other things, 
it, they're galvanizing issues in the country right now, then alone on YouTube. So it's not fun. And, and you know that's part of the reason this story caught my eye and I stuck it in here. Or it's this. The way this story is going around the blogosphere, and this is technically technical, but it's also political. It's a good transition story for those of you who are like, stick to tech, stay off of this stuff, you know? <laughs> um, and, and that is, it, bl the way Bloomberg and all the, blo and all the blogs that have picked up this story and rehashing it or reporting it is big, bad, evil banks and credit card companies taking out poor mom and pop. And it's a and it's a load of crap. Here's what happened: this this little mom and pop restaurant was committed a PCI compliance violation. Uh, Visa's terms that Visa recent uh, not that long ago changed their terms to a few years back basically state you are no longer allowed to store credit card numbers. And, and when the industry was making this transition, everybody, you know cash register programs, e-commerce content management systems, credit card processing machines. It was, we will give you the new stuff. We will upgrade you to be in compliance. But Visa is adamant about this because the reality is they realized that information of Visa's customers sitting there was a massive security breach. And Anybody who's worked retail, anybody who's worked e-commerce, realize is how many people's credit card information is laying around, laying around in the computers, laying around in the receipts. That shouldn't be. They, it, the order's been processed. They don't need it anymore. Maybe right. to do an order verification, you need a process batch number in the last four digits. You do not need the full 16-digit card number. You, and all the information to basically commit financial fraud against the person whose card it is. Well, this little mom and pop restaurant didn't get in compliance. So the middleman processor, because they were going to be facing fines for not being in compliance, you know, basically said, okay, these transactions that are fraud or being your son, your thing shut down because of this. You know, basically they strong armed. They said you're not in compliance. You're cut off until you you're, you need to get in compliance. The financial damages that are directly traced to you. You're in violation here. You're in violation there. And the story's going around the blogosphere. Big bad credit card company attacking poor mom and pop. Every damn person should be mad at this mom and pop. It, it, this is not. It's not because the reality. Yeah, I know they're casting your information. This yeah, is, and that's it, the thing. They may. They may. Let's say they had a record of never being breached. But let's say that one time that does happen. You know how damaging it is. The one time that that breach may occur, and your information is out there, man, it is the most miserable thing to try to come back from. Well, and I think that the credit card companies, all they're doing is they have the consumer. They have the consumer's minds. And it's just to try to prevent a lot of the fraud that is happening already. And they're, you know, they're saying, hey, let's be compliant with this. Because otherwise you won't have to be able to have the Visa card. And that's fine. There might find restaurants that say, we're no longer Visa. We're going to be MasterCard. Or we're going to be American Express with Discover. Because we don't want to be compliant with these standards. You know, when all the banks do it, maybe say Discover and American Express do it and all that stuff. American Express has got a policy that, you know, they... If you, they, they are awesome because American Express is my favorite card. They, um, boy, the security and the, and the fraud detection is, is phenomenal. And it does get a little that, annoying though when you swap your Amex card and they have to call in and you have to sit there for five minutes. I never had to call it. Never had to call it. But um, I've had an Amex, you know, shoot, since I, I could. And they even uh, do it. I find they do investigations far better than these and everybody else. I, this is not going to be a plug for my career. I, I'll, I just, I just, I'm just saying that... This uh, show brought to you by American Express. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> they, they, I they're wish. Not the fees, they're not the friendliest fees to the, to, the, to the vendors. Oh, no. But, uh, In fact, they're the highest. The only yeah. one that's the only one that is occasionally Actually, higher is... No. It depends on the deal you get because I know. No, no, yeah, the the two highest are Discover and Amex, but uh, they, they're both about five percent. Except Visa or Mastercard, they accepted American Express and Discover, but not Visa and Mastercard. It's like what? This is weird. But um, 
the, the, the thing that I'm getting at is that they do have the consumer in mind. They're trying to pre- prevent the fraud because it's, but let's, put it, let's be frank, there's a lot of money. Well, I mean, to put it in perspective, no, someone's car is stolen or the numbers are stolen. I can put it in perfect perspective. What this yeah. poor little mom and pop was doing uh, by, by not properly securing this information and having information that they shouldn't and so on and so forth is the source of the breaches that create not millions, billions with a B of financial fraud money that basically tr- causes the rates and the fees of everybody who's paying their bills to go up every year. And that's, uh, I mean, it's, you, you want these holes sealed. And, and I have, because I've worked dealing directly with this, I will tell you nine times out of ten, I have quit contracts over this, or are threatened to quit contracts over this, because they get these notices about security warnings or things they're supposed to do. And for the last decade, the small business, the mom and pop's reaction to these notices, this is a breach. Hackers came in and did this. You know, basically protect your customer's information. Their response to it always is, oh, what are the odds of that really happening through my business? They literally do not care at all. And it, I mean, it's, it's literally criminal negligence at best, at how loosey-goosey they are, because it's not their info, why do they care? And the industry has said, well, if you don't care, you don't get, you, you're, you're no longer part of the processing system. And I think that's the right approach, because they've just not cared for so long. Yeah, I, I, exactly. And, and the thing of it is, is what, what is the response to it? I, I see, what are the reasons that people are saying, what would be the position that's the intended of this, to, to leave it alone? Or have the government intervene? See, th- see, this is the problem that I have with those that are pro-government. This is capitalism, essentially, a company saying, "Hey, uh, if you want to do business with us, these are the guidelines." Uh, and it doesn't have to be banks; it could be with anybody. Uh, that happens. So like, like UPS makes conditions, FedEx makes conditions, uh, hospitals make conditions. Where I go and buy uh, from Walmart. Has conditions. Oh, and the really funny thing is these. I mean, it's like the, the funny thing is these stories go off on that and go, "Oh, their contract was this thick; they couldn't possibly I, read it all." It's, it's I like bank. No, because the bank. I mean, the banks are not necessarily <laughs> our enemies here. This, I mean, the, 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 I, it's so easy to go after banks because nobody has really a whole lot of education on the, uh, on, on what goes on. Um, but the. Projecting problems on something that we know little about, and we're going to use sound bites and headlines again—it's just a thing very childish. The, the 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 clearly in this, the the consumer is in mind, and they're not using government regulations. What that would truly then make everything more expensive by making it compliance. Instead, what happens is a negotiation. Oh well, Visa, you know what? I may just drop you, and that may make Visa think well. Gosh, that's probably why I'm giving everything away to them, so it doesn't cost them any more. Just do this, and we won't have to worry about it. Well, now, and that was the other thing. Two years. Saying, you need to pay tax. Why is it that government, like, government regulation always ends up in saying, there's a tax for this? That's the What's other the, reason okay. I have no sympathy for what I'm... I doubt this little restaurant is the first little one we're going to hear a whiny story about in the next 18 months, because a few years ago... Uh, Visa and MasterCard strengthened their their minimum requirements to keep processing. But what they started doing uh, in recent years, and they're basically going through all their accounts, they're auditing them to make sure they got in compliance. Because for two years plus before they changed these things, when they made this decision, they sent notices. They sent notices to all their third party people. Basically. Everybody got at least a dozen notices that this is going to change. This is how you get in compliance. The whole industry was going, we don't want to lose this money anymore. We don't want this breach to exist. We're going to upgrade you for free. Just get in compliance. So now they're going through and auditing everybody because anybody who isn't in compliance at this point is 
literally they don't give a crap about their customers security and the it, it is zero tolerance if at this point you're in violation and this started a few years ago but there been anybody who's still in violation they are going to be sources of breaches we have no sympathy shot because they spent millions making sure everybody had the ability to be in compliance for little or no cost and it's that there's not sympathy and there shouldn't be sympathy at this point <laughs> So, I mean, I, I can't stress that enough uh, about this. Just educate yourself and, and stop listening to sound bites. You know, it requires a little bit more than watching the YouTube videos for this long. I, I, I agree. And like you're saying, it's nine out of ten times it's ignorance. The reality is most people have no direct first-hand experience with any of it. So they, they basically, like you say, hear a sound bite, take it as fact, and repeat it. <laughs> it's easier than that.